All right, in this video, we're going to look at the pin channel. Um, again, one of the things I want to emphasize uh, using um, is that link values and equations um, tool that I just showed you um, in the last video. So please make sure you're trying to apply that to this one. You do have three variables on this drawing. Uh, we have A, which is 42 and a half. You're going to find A right here. We have B, which is 15. We do have B in two different spots. So we have the depth of this cut here, which you can see up here. And then we have B right here, which is also the depth of this cut. The one confusing part a lot of people mess up on is confusing B with this 13 dimension. The 13 dimension is actually from this point here to this point here on the bottom of the main part. So we're looking at from here to here is 13. But the depth of this cut back here is 15. So we need to make sure that we're applying the appropriate dimension right there. Uh, and then we have C, which is 84. So you can see C is also in a few different places. So we have from the midpoint of this circle down to the bottom of the object is C. From uh, the width of the object is C. So here to here. And then finally, the um, radius right here um, is going to be C as well for that big arc, which that will make that if you took a center line and drew it from um, this point here down to this center point, that would also be 84. And that's how you get that arc. The one thing I do want to mention right here is you don't really see a break in this curve into this line right here. What that means is that that actually has what's called a tangent arc. And you can do it one of two ways. You can either create the arc itself and attach it to the line, or you can create a tangent arc that flows into the line. Either one of those options is going to work. I'm going to show you uh, one of those options while I'm drawing this one today. So we're going to dive into this one. Um, again, anytime I'm looking at how to start a drawing, I'm looking at uh, what view has the most information on it. So for me, the front view of this object right here has the most information. So I'm probably going to start right there. Um, once I have it figured out which view I'm going to start from, I then try to find a, a point of emphasis to go from. For this one, I know a lot of things are built off the center of this circle right here. So I'm going to use that as my point of origin to kind of draw everything else off of as a reference point. So let's go ahead and dive into this one. So I'm going to start new part. I'm going to make sure I'm in MMGS. I'm going to start this one on the front plane, sketch, and I'm going to start with a circle. So I'm going to put it right here on the origin, draw up a circle, and then I'm going to put a couple lines on here. So I'm going to go one line from the top quadrant of the circle, another one from the bottom quadrant, a little line over, a little up and to the left, and here. So what you can see I just drew is I drew that circle, that vertical line up, vertical line down, over, up at an angle, and just a little bit of line right there um, to kind of give me a reference point. So I can go and start throwing some dimensions on this. Um, I did say that a lot of these right here from the center of the circle to this line was C, which was 84. We had the same thing up here because the arc of that is 84. That means that that distance is also 84. And then I have the width right here, which is also 84. We also already talked about this line right here being 13 wide. We have an angle on this of 30 degrees and then we have this center circle. So what's that center circle's diameter? Well, if I don't see it on this first drawing, my first um, intuition is to take this and go to the right. Well, I see a radius right there, but that looks a lot bigger. So if I take a horizontal line and draw it straight over, I can see that that attaches to that bigger circle. But this one right here, if I come straight across, that looks like that attaches here. So that means that's going to be 53.25. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on. So 53.25. There we go. And I want to put this 30 degree angle on here. There we go. So I have a lot of things to mention and you can see everything's already um, uh, user defined. So I've, I've got dimensions on everything that I need. So I need to put this arc on here. So up here in my menu, 
Again, you have tangent arc, three-point arc, center point arc. I'm going to use the three-point arc this time just so you guys can see how to apply uh, a tangent point to it afterwards, or a tangent relation. So I'm going to click point one, point two. Now you can see if I'm moving this around, you can see that center point. I want to get it right on there, but it's not quite falling right where I want. So I'm just going to pull it off here a little bit and set it down. I already know that this is 84. So I'm going to put a dimension on here of 84. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to make this line and this line tangent, meaning this flows into this. So I'm going to simply click on this line, control click the bottom line, and I get my relations. So I'm going to add in a tangent relation. Now you can see that flows perfectly into that check mark. And if I click on the line, you're going to see that tangent mark pop up showing you that these two points are now tangent. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and extrude this, extrude boss base. It looks like this thing, if I'm going from here, because I just drew this face here, I need to go back. I need to go back 300 millimeters. And <clears throat> I want to extrude this face. Uh, that's coming forward though, so I want to flip this. I'm going to flip the direction. And I want to go 300 millimeters blind, meaning I want to go back in one direction. All right, check mark. All right, that's looking pretty good. What I want to do next is I have three other elements I need to actually four, sorry, four other elements I need to add on here. I need to add this bigger cut. I need to add this slot here. I need to add this cut up here. And then I need to add this extrusion as well. I'm going to save this part for the end. This is a little bit tricky. Um, so I'm going to do these other three um, in a row so we can see how that's done. All right, first one I want to do is this bigger cut right here. We can see right now has a radius of 42.5. That means the diameter is double that. So if I take 42.5 times two, that gives me 85. So if I was to draw a circle and make that 85, it should be a radius of 42.5. You can also see the depth of that cut is at 75 millimeters. So I'm simply gonna go back on that face, sketch, I'm going to put another circle from that same exact center point. Smart to mention that. And I already said it's 42.5 is the radius, but that I need diameter for this one. So I'm going to do times two. Enter. Yeah, there we go. We have a, a diameter of 85. It will only give you a radius if the circle is broken. So you can see on my, my dimension uh, that it shows radius. Well, that's because if you're looking at the drawing itself, it's no longer a full circle. Full circles, it'll always have you dimension and diameter. Partial circles, it's always going to have you dimension and a radius. Let's go ahead and features, extrude cut. Now we need to take that thing back, but we said this is going to be 75 millimeters deep. That looks pretty good. There's our first cut. All right, for this slot, we're looking at 200 millimeters wide a radius of 15 and it looks like it's five millimeters off the bottom but you'll notice the slot is only rounded on one end the other end is not rounded so the way to achieve that look is I'm gonna go ahead and select on this face I'm gonna sketch so it's gonna normal to so it's gonna rotate that face to me I'm gonna go ahead and use a straight slot and on that straight slot, I'm actually going to start it down here on this line. What I don't want to do is pop on this midpoint, because if it, I select the midpoint, I can't move that. So I'm going to go just a little bit below that, but I'm going to uh, maintain being on that line. I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to go roughly about 200. I'm pretty close. And then I'm going to pull that out, but I want to make sure I don't go past this because I need to put a gap in there. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to dimension this at 200 millimeters. And does it matter that this is hanging over? Not even a little bit. It can cut out thin air all day long. We want it to cut out the material where we want it though. All right, I'm gonna go from here to here. It's gonna be five. And lastly, we have a radius of 15. Okay, the thing I see a lot of people make the mistake on is they do this dimension here, the five millimeter, from this bottom line to the center line. That is incorrect, it's from the bottom line of the object, the main object, to the bottom line of this slot. Okay, features, extrude cut. We've already said on this that that cut, you can see it right here, is B. B is 15. 
I'm going to put in 15 for that depth. There we go. And now we're going to go up to this top piece. So I'm going to again select that face, sketch. Okay, for this one, it's really important that we cut out the whole thing. Um, so you can see this is a curved surface on the back side. So it's important when we're doing a curved surface cut that we actually go a little bit above the object. Because if we don't, it doesn't actually cut all the way through the curved surface. So for this rectangle, I'm actually going to go just a little bit above the surface. I'm going to go down to this center point here. I'm going to go and put on my dimensions. I can see this is 35 wide. It's 100 away from that edge. And then it is B deep. So B again is 15. So I'm going to do 35. I was pretty close on drawing that. I'm going to go 100 away from the edge. There we go. And the only other thing I need to do with this right now is extrude cut at 15. Okay, I'm going to stop right there to show you um, the draft feature. Again, there is a, um, a little tutorial in in your readings about the draft tool. Um, draft is simply how to create an angled cut. So right now, if I was to look straight down on this, you can see this cut is straight out, okay? So it's a box cut. If I wanted to, I could create what's called a draft cut. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit better so you can see it. I'm gonna click on that cut extrude that I just did and hit edit feature. And in this, it will allow me to do what's called a draft. So I'm gonna click draft. And say I wanted to draft this thing at like five degrees. Okay, what that's going to allow me to do if I go to that top view, <laughs> it allows me to create a cut, but it's not a boxed cut. It's not a perf perfectly rectangular cut. It's going to draft in, and the bigger I make that draft, the more it's going to angle in. Okay, so that is a way to add a draft to this. I know there's not one on this drawing, um, but it is something, a, a tool I did want to show you, and I thought this was a, a perfect opportunity to show you that uh, particular um, tool. So the last thing we need is this front extrusion. Okay, this front extrusion is a little bit tricky. Um, we do have to do some construction lines and you can see one right here to be able to create this and the, the point it needs to be. So I'm gonna go back to this front face, sketch. I'm gonna use a center line again because center lines can be used as construction lines, meaning they do not extrude themselves. They're just there to help you draw what you need to draw. Okay, I'm, from there, I'm going to go ahead and draw two lines, both perpendicular to this line right here. I'm going to go up. You can see that perpendicular feature is on. Perfect. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do that same perpendicular line. Good. There we go. Now I need to put some dimensions on this. So we can see this is 80 wide total. It is 40 on each side. Assume anytime you see a center line right there, that means if this whole thing is 80, that means each side is 40. Okay, so we are doing 55 for the width here. And this does need to be aligned, meaning at the angle of the line. 55, this side is 40, this side is also 40. That looks pretty good. Okay, last thing we need is this arc. Okay, there's two ways to do it. One, you can either redraw the arc. The other thing that you can do is a, a very handy tool called Convert Entities. If I simply select on the arc, and you can see it's a little bit bigger than what I need right here. I just need from here to here. but It's giving me a little bit more. And I hit Convert Entities. It converts an edge into an identical entity, um, but puts them on the current plane. So now I actually have another line right there. I'm going to trim off the pieces I don't need, so I'm just going to trim entities. I always use this power trim. Uh, most of the time, this used to not be a tool in SolidWorks. I am used to have to trim base according to where you're at. Power trim is incredibly easy to use. You simply click the things you don't want anymore. So if I don't want this part, I can click it, and it goes away. Okay. What I like is using the line draw, so I can draw a line straight through that, and it goes away in that area. There we go, there we go. So what it leaves is our shape, which we have to have a polygon to extrude, so now we have a polygon. 
The last thing we do need to put on here before we do anything else is our angle. You can see that these are set at a 30, 38 degree angle. So I'm going to go from this bottom line here. I could also go from that center line. Either one's perfectly fine. I like to go from the bottom line to this one right here. It's the center of our object. Simply rotate it 38 to 38 degrees. And now we're going to extrude boss base. You can see it starting to extrude out, and it looks like this guy is 40 wide. There we go. One of the ways you can tell you if you did this right, look at the back side. If this flows into there naturally, you did it right. I mean, as far as creating the tangent. If you see a line right here from here to here, you know you did something wrong. That's a dead giveaway that you did something wrong. Okay, from here you just need to apply your material. For this one, I believe it is 1060 alloy. Yep, and then go ahead and weigh your product and turn that in for your grade. Um, for mine right now, um, I'm just going to leave it as is. That way you guys can check your own work. All right, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. As always, either reach out via Canvas or uh, reach out on my contact.